This five-minute presentation will discuss Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Specifically, we will go over the clinical scenarios that should prompt us to think about Pseudomonas and discuss the treatment options. Pseudomonas is a gram-negative aerobic bacilli that is found ubiquitously in the environment. It can cause a wide range of infections, but two important groups of patients that are commonly seen on the MTU include opportunistic infection in the immunocompromised host, and this can include things like osteomyelitis and otitis externa, and usually these patients have diabetes, and nosocomial infection, or infection in hospitalized patients. And this can include things like pneumonia, urinary tract infections, and line infections. It is important to know about these types of infections because Pseudomonas is a virulent organism that is often resistant to many commonly used antibiotics. This is due to things like beta-lactamase and mutation of the drug target for an example. Because a limited number of antibiotics have reliable activity against Pseudomonas, a common question asked on the internal medicine ward is what antibiotics can be used to treat Pseudomonas? To answer this question, I like to break the choices up into three main categories, beta-lactams, aminoglycosides, and fluoroquinolones. In the category of beta-lactams, we have the penicillin derivatives, cephalosporins, and carbapenems. Penicillin derivatives include the well-known antibiotic peptazo. Cephalosporins include the third-generation cephalosporin septazidine. And carbapenems include meropenem, but importantly, not ertapenem, and this is because ertapenem does not have activity against Pseudomonas. Under the category of aminoglycosides, we have gentamicin, tobramycin, and amikacin. And in the category of fluoroquinolones, we have ciprofloxacin and levofloxacin. And the fluoroquinolones are good oral options for patients that are either clinically well enough to tolerate oral therapy or patients that require long-term suppressive therapy. And now the reason I like to break the antibiotic choices specifically into these three main categories is because of this concept of double coverage. And double coverage means that you want to use two different antibiotics to cover Pseudomonas in certain situations. And these situations can include, for example, serious infections where Pseudomonas is suspected, so maybe a hospitalized patient that becomes acutely unwell and septic on the ward, or a patient that has a known Pseudomonas infection but a high risk of resistance. And so, for example, a patient with cystic fibrosis or chronic lung disease who has been on a variety of different antibiotics in the past and therefore are at high risk for having resistant organisms. And so double coverage essentially means that you should choose two antibiotics from the three different antibiotic classes listed above. And so, for example, this would include peptazo and gentamicin rather than peptazo and meropenem because peptazo and meropenem come from the same antibiotic class and therefore would not be considered double coverage. So in conclusion, Pseudomonas is a virulent organism that can cause infections in immunocompromised patients as well as hospitalized patients. And it is important to know what antibiotics cover Pseudomonas and choose them carefully.